Good afternoon. This is the 29th webinar of the Brazilian Academy of Sciences, a series that started at the beginning of this pandemic. The focus of this webinar, challenges for the future of the economy. It's, it's very important that we are able to establish a strong relation between uh, our academies and the Brazilian Academy. And I think that is important not only with the Brazilian Academy, but all academies of the world. Because uh, science is uh, one of the key mechanisms on the key tools that we have to understand the world. And if we don't understand our world, it's clearly that we are going to uh, drive in the wrong direction. No country is an island. We are all connected one to another one. And it is crucial that, um, that we go on to understand the connection to discuss problems together. The fact is that uh, Brazil, since the 80s, uh, is not growing satisfactorily. Investment is not growing. And since 1990, you are in a neoliberal policy regime. So. Uh, the state has nothing to do with growth. Uh, science and technology means nothing. No? This, everything, the market resolves. This is ridiculous because, as you said, uh, in the United States, in China, China is not a, a liberal, but the United States is liberal. Uh, anyway, they are always investing strongly in science and technology, not us. No? Uh, we, what I say is that, on the other hand, is that the, the, uh, the community of science and technology must sp speak more about uh, growth and the economics. Cannot, you should not leave the problem to the economists. Every uh, important innovation, the United States government is behind. Uh, the issue is that the, the tools that they use it uh, they, they use some tools that Germany use other tools uh, like a developed bank uh, and this, uh, the United States don't have a developed bank, but they have other uh, um, instruments uh, to, to foster uh, science and technology. Uh, in the case of Brazil, uh, the problem is, as Professor Bresses said, this uh, neoliberal model uh, that the, the idea that a state uh, should uh, withdraw from the economy, that the market is efficient, and this idea of the comparative advantage, but because when Louis uh, was speaking, I remember, because this is the view. So is that we should uh, specialize in agriculture because it's our adv uh, comparative advantage. <laughs> So uh, this is ridiculous because we need to build our uh, comparative advantage. We need to, uh, 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 how you say, uh, recover and uh, uh, rebuild these instruments. Uh, and but this will only happen with other kind of governments. Uh, and if we don't invest in science and technology, we will not uh, achieve uh, a sustainable environmental and also inclusive growth. And I myself, uh, I find it difficult to understand how uh, science, uh, investment in science can be left aside so easily and destroy so much of what have been built or years uh, of uh, investment in science and technology in Brazil. Still, we are uh, underdeveloped in this uh, field, but we had some uh, good experience. We have some uh, good, good expertise in some fields, and I, I believe that we are losing it very quickly. It destroys very easy. And the only uh, justification for that is the blind faith with the markets. So markets are uh, the best to allocate resources. And of course, the markets just short sites, want quick return, and uh, investment in science and technology is a long-term investment. Uh, the essential thing uh, to, to reduce inequality is to have a progressive tax system. There are several studies. People in Ipea, there are some 
very good specialists in this area, but they are not being heard. And this is absolutely important. Uh, uh, the issue has been the, uh, more on the issue about the fiscal deficits and how fiscal deficits relation to, with, to growth. Uh, but because growth is not, has not responded uh, even in developed countries very strong, I believe that fiscal policy after the pandemic crisis might gain more floor in the debate. And I believe that the point is, uh, and to change the view, not on fiscal deficits, but on the fiscal, on, on uh, spending, public spending, and the impact of public spending in, uh, on growth. And my concern is that it seems to me that in Brazil, as in Italy, too much emphasis is on consumption and too little on investment. We are giving pocket money to everybody. And this is just seems to me panem and chief chances, as the Romans say. <laughs> just you give money to keep people quiet. This is not, this is not a serious fiscal policy. A serious fiscal policy is public expenditure, infrastructure, in investment. Of course, at the beginning, in the first wave of the crisis, it was important to help people out. But this is continuing, helping with this pocket money. And this is a huge amount of money that has very little effect on the economy. Uh, I do uh, agree with Brasser's uh, uh, statement that, uh, you know, maybe I could uh, just say it like that, economy, it's too important to leave it just to economists. Uh, uh, so scientists, other sectors of the society must discuss this. And, and uh, since different interests also are involved and indeed we have been going to the parliament recently, you know, to the Congress and trying to change the budget for science as they did in the United States. You know, in the United States, it was not the executive branch. It was the Congress that changed the budget for science and technology in the good sense, uh, increasing the budget. So it's a big challenge for us in Brazil. It's a big challenge, challenge also for, for, uh, uh, for meeting the challenges for the future of the economy, which is the title of this webinar.